Hello and welcome to Not Fake News. We got three articles here for you. Um, main, most, pretty much, to, it's dealing with bullies. Okay? And I'm going to tell you what articles we're dealing with right now. We have from PJ Media, Michael Wash, Rand Paul takes on warmongering bully John McCain. Then we have 11 year old uh, docked points for not bashing Trump by a teacher who's a bully. And of course we have the media sure asked President Obama a lot of tough questions. So we have the opposite of bullying at the end. Okay? Let's get right to it. Rand Paul takes on warmongering bully John McCain. Story by Michael Walsh. Let's check that out. It seems that the worst person in America, American public life, an elderly gentleman who is simply refuses to get off the stage, especially now that he's back in the good graces of his liberal admirers in his media, is up to his old tricks. On a visit to Munich this weekend, John McCain, we did a video, criticized President Trump, praised Germany, uh, and praised German Chancellor Angela Merkel, and generally trampled all over an old adage that politics end at the water's edge. But then, McCain has never let niceties like manners, party loyalty, or just plain human decency knock him off his largely imaginary moral high horse. Regrettably, returned to office last year by the foolish voters of Arizona, McCain has another six years of stabbing his ostensible allies in the back while busily trying to drag the United States into another purposeless war with just about any country you could think of. It would take Sigmund Freud to figure out McCain's particular pathology, a combination of arrogance privilege, guilt, and a political impotence that ill-serves the country he claims to love. Finally, one of his colleagues in the Senate has the guts to call him out. I just wish we had a video. Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky on Sunday warned against taking seriously comments his Senator colleague John McCain of Arizona made on Saturday in which an Arizona, the Arizona lawmaker compared President Trump's action towards the press to how dictators get started. The thing is, I don't agree with his analysis, and applying that to the president, Paul told John Call, guest of ABC's This Week, everything that McCain says about the president is colored by his own personal dispute. He's, he's got running with the president... And it shouldn't be taken with a grain of salt. Because of John McCain's, the guy that advocated for war everywhere, he would bankrupt the nation. We're lucky we don't have him as president. Paul, known for his non interventionist foreign policy, has expressed relief that the 2008 Republican presidential nominee did not have a chance to act on his views as commander-in-chief. And actually, we're... Very lucky John McCain is not in charge because I think we would probably be in a perpetual war, a perpetual war, Paul said. As if we're not already, one might observe everywhere McCain goes, trouble seems to follow. His latest run of destabilization included, includes meddling in Egypt, Libya, and Syria, all of which ended in death and disaster. He's like the grim reaper. Now he's itching to mix it up with Russia over Ukraine and Crimea. A surefire losing battle, since the Russians will never return Crimea and will gobble up as much of Ukraine as they like. And there's not a damn thing anyone will or should do about it. All right, that's that one. Now we have the next one is uh, a teacher who's a bully. 11 year old docket points for not bashing Trump. 11-year-old docked points for not bashing Trump. What does it say on there? He, it's circled here. President Trump speaks in a very superior and man, uh, manner insulting many people. 
wait a minute. President Trump speaks in a very superior and blank manner, insulting many people. He needs to be more blank so that the American people can respect and admire him because they don't now. Barack Obama set a blank when he became the first African-American president. You see what this is? Do you see what I'm seeing? See, I'm very skeptical. The first thing I think of is, okay, they want to put our kids in little groups. You got the groups that are little, little liberal groups, and, the Demo and, the, and you got the Democrats and the Republicans. So they know, because you got to understand, academia is all liberal. They're all Democrats. They've been infiltrated. Okay? They are, like, literally the enemy. Okay? And what's happening is they're, take, they're, they're teaching our kids. But is, if they don't talk about politics, that's fine. Once they start bringing politics in, it's bad. This is bad. This is really bad because it's like a, a survey of... Democrats and Republicans. So what are they going to do? They're going to take the Democrat kids and they're going to give them better treatment. Uh, even if they don't even realize it, you're just going to treat them better. And then you got the Republican kids who are going to get the shit end. I mean, that's just the beginning of things like this. This is bad. To say that some people dislike Trump may be, well, an understatement of the year. It's hard to imagine and duly elected president seeing so many protests in his first two months in office, yet here we are. It's so bad now that an 11-year-old in Annandale, New York, was docked 15 points on his homework assignment because she failed to answer a question demanding that the student bashes Trump. Vincent Ungro, a dad from Annandale, New York, has an 11-year-old daughter who attends IS Intermediate School 75. She asked him for her help with her vocabulary homework last Friday night because she was trying to fill in the blanks from a word blank, a bank to complete her assignment. So they gave her a word bank as well and was really puzzled. President Trump speaks in a very superior and blank manner. We, we just read that, right? So anyway, it's important. President Trump speaks in a very superior and blank manner, insulting many people. He needs to be more blank so that the American people can respect and admire him. Read one homework sentence. Then the next question was Barack Obama set a blank when he became the first American president. And what were the choices, the two questions you asked? These three words. Haughty or naughty? Probably haughty. Humble and precedent. So... So President Trump speaks in a very superior and humble manner, insulting many people. No, can't be that. Um, in a haughty, I guess it must be haughty, right? Because it can't be. You you following me? You going along with this? And the next question was, uh, and and he needs to be more precedent. No, doesn't make sense. He needs to be more humble. So it's haughty and then humble for this, and then obviously precedent. So the next question is: Barack Obama set a precedence when he precedent when he became the first African American president. Wow, what a good lesson that is. Not so, it, that's not subtle at all. <laughs> and what were the choices? Da 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 da. I read that. Ungro, forty six, the guy who's the father told his daughter not to fill in those blanks and wrote a note to the teacher, uh, Adria Zawatsky, on the homework sheet. As the post notes, please keep your political views to yourself and do not try to influence my children on them. Thank you. you he wrote. Please keep your political views to yourself. Do not try to. I'm, I, I, I thought of something different to say, which was not as nice. The teacher docked the points, which Ungro called vindictive, and I agree. The teacher, and because what I would have said uh, would have gotten docked points. Maybe not. I don't think what he said should have. Okay? The teacher docked the points. The teacher emailed Ungro and defended her question, stating that she was addressing his personality rather than his ability to serve in the office of president. She went on to add that the media makes similar references to Trump and that she believes she has the same right. Wow. Wow, right? 
This is an article by Tom Knighton from PG Media. And finally, so you had the bully McCain, you have the kid who's being bullied by the teacher, and now you have the, the president who doesn't know the meaning of, of being bullied because all he ever got was a bunch of simple tin questions like this. I got the Christmas Eve excitement brewing right here at Hardball because tomorrow night at this precisely this time, 7 o'clock Eastern, the President of the United States is going to join us here on Hardball. Ooh. People in the mainstream media have uh, been accused of being afraid to speak truth to power. And I've got, I've got some truth to power. Your dog looks like he's out of control. <laughs> A lot of parallels have been... I can see this is going to get really, really uh, heavy, huh? yourself and John F. Kennedy, who also made history, came in with a young, attractive family, had a lot of big Harvard brains around him. And when was the first moment that it began to sink in that you were president of the United States? Just you about at any time in this campaign that you have a chuckle that you just couldn't get rid of, something weird that happened, it was so crazy that you just went to bed laughing about it. How confident are you? that your plan is going to work, and how do you avoid the dangers of being too cocky? You've racked up a lot of wins in the last few weeks that a lot of people thought would be difficult to come by. Are you ready to call yourself the comeback kid? You know, you are the, the equivalent of a rock star in politics. Do you feel sometimes like your administration is not given the credit it deserves? Where do you get all this confidence? How does this feel of all the honors that have come your way? During these first 100 days, what has surprised you the most? about this office, enchanted you the most about serving in this office. Christy and I go back away. I've never seen you lose. I wasn't looking that one time. <laughs> Finally, this is a political question you want to duck, but how does your golf game hold up next to Tigers? A golf. What does it do for you? You think Utah would finish undefeated by defeating Alabama? Has it going to claim as either of those schools to be the national champion? How do you handle the, the controversy, negativity? Why be president? Are you a masochist? And business gets done on this walk. Yes, exactly. And what do you think Republicans will be sipping and saying next? <laughs> wow. Could they fall over themselves any more than they just did? Falling over themselves and blathering idiots. Well, you know. That's it. Well, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe. And hit the bell if you want to get notifications of the upcoming stories as they break. If you like what we're doing here at Not Fake News, please like the video. It's a very important that you like the video, and it means a lot to us. And we really appreciate it. It pushes us up on YouTube. And you know what that does? That pushes down the shitty, crappy Democrat videos that they're out there. Yep. So... If you're here to fight the good fight, make sure you like that video. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time at Not Fake News.